Any profitable question? Um, anyone that have a question, not just the men of God alone, I answer. But before then, let's have a few minutes of, uh, of what God will have for us right now. Understand that I should not stay so long, so I'm going to be brief. The message, then we'll go for the answer. We have a message before us tonight titled Strive to be faithful to the end. Strive to be faithful to or till the end. But then this message came to me as a result of what I'm thinking. I'm scared and I'm begin to pity my soul. Why? Not because I'm not serving God, but if all the distractions around me will allow my soul to be saved at last. I'm scared of my soul. If the happening around, if all the things that the eyes can picture, we allow this my precious soul to rest at last. But glory be to God, the Bible says, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And though the Lord is strengthening us, we should also try to conclude in ourselves that my aim is to see the Lord on the last day and to enter into his rest. Concluding that nothing on earth here matters to you and I again. Many we're going to be striving against all the riches of the earth, strive against all the problems, and keep our hearts and our minds straight to where we are going to. The Lord asked a question before he left this world. Please, go time, stay good, please, you'll be reading, start to be reading. Um, amen. Let me see. Amen. Pastor, please, go, go bless you, sir. Will you be kind and humble enough to do so? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, those people are okay for now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, quickly, uh, okay, so I'm, uh, sister, the person quickly read Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. They just brush through it. And that person will be going to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. And that person. Philippians 2, 14 to 16. Amen. So please, please read it through Luke 18, 1 to 8, man. Can I hear you, man, please? Sorry. Luke 18, from verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint too, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Three, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary, verse four, and he will not for, for a while. But afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, Eight, five, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her least, by her continually coming, she wear me. Six, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Seven, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with, with them. Eight, I tell you that he, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you have sat down one day and think about this last word the Lord said. This is God speaking, not man. If God can, could ask such a question, it means it's terrible. When he wants to start, he said, for this end, at, he said, to this end, man or men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Now ask yourself a question now. Because of that problem, because of all the happening, all we are seeing on Facebook, 
are we still praying as we ought to pray? Are we not fainting already? Whenever your eyes look at things that is happening right now, think about the vaccine they're talking about. Think about how do we punish people? Are you still able to pray as you ought to pray? Or you are already fainting in your heart. And after he told us how we ought to call on him, with the parable he said about it, that woman, how the woman was pressing on, pressing on until the king avenged for her. He said in verse 8, where I am really concentrating on, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, if he decide not to, if he decide to delay, just as in John chapter 11, they call on him, our brother, Lazarus is sick. He tarried for another three days and the young man died. If he come, we least him meet matter and Mary loving him. But glory be to God, they knew him as God. And before, before then, they knew him as God. And when he also came, they still knew him as God. But what about you? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? It's a big question. And this question should be, should be a concern to me and you. Will God meet you faithful when he shall come? Will that thing that you are going through not take you out of it? Are you even still faithful? Can you and I say the way we started with him, that is how we are still now. And we are not supposed to be so. We are supposed to have grown. But many of us, we did not even remember to say we have gone back. And yet, we want God to rapture us on that day. Brethren, the Bible says in 1 Peter, please read it, chapter 4, verse 7. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Amen. Amen. For the end of all things, the end of enjoyment, the end of sorrows, the end of this world, the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Is this what we are doing? When the Son of Man shall come, will he meet you and I watching unto prayer? Things that are supposed to push us into praying is pushing many of us away from prayer. We are being distracted and preaching because this is what I'm going through. I'm telling people, I'm preaching to people, I don't know what I'm, I don't know about you. I'm crying day and night, Father, I'm being distracted. Deliver me. If you come today, I don't think you will meet me faithful. So please help me, Lord. You know why? A lot of things are distracting me. Think about vaccine, think about so many things. But I heard a still verse some days ago, which I've told some people Will you take your eyes or your mind away from all these things and think of how you can please me? Take your mind away from if vaccine will come, if they'll keep people. Don't let that be your concern. Let your concern be how you can please me. And that is my consolation today. It's saying, watch unto prayer. Because the end of that thing that is happening to you is at hand. And for us to be found faithful on that day, everything we are doing must be done out of memory. There must not be memory complaining. I will not complain. I will not memory. And yet we want the Lord to come and rapture us on that day. Philippians 2, 14. Philippians 2, 14 to 16. 15, sir? 16. 16. Okay. 
He said, do all things without murmurings and disputings. 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooks and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. 16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Amen. Amen. He laid that principle that God in his mercy to Apostle Paul gave to us, do all things, every work I gave to you, everything I give for you to do, do it without murmuring and disputing. Don't fight over anything. Do all with joy if you want to be fight, fight faithful at the end of the journey. Why? That ye may be blameless for you and I to be fought faithful to enter God's kingdom. We must be blameless in everything the Lord has put in our hands to do. Any little blemish has made you or that person unfaithful. Then, and harmless the, the sons of God with that rebuke, so that on that day, nothing shall the devil you to rebuke your thing. You are not supposed to be here. And he said, in the, mook, in the midst of the crook generation we are today, where the Lord has made you a shining light, are we still shining? Are we not even forgetting more than the people we're supposed to be encouraging? Hey, Basio, hey, all this is so, all this is so. The people of the world are supposed to be encouraged through you and I. They are supposed to have more strength because they see how we are shining forth. But we, even you and I, we are even more concerned about what will happen in the world that we don't belong to. You and I don't belong to this world. You and I should not be concerned about what you happen today. You and I are supposed to go out there, conscientizing, telling people, don't worry, hold on to my Jesus. And on that day, the Lord will deliver you from them all. But you and I, we are more concerned. We are not shining. Then he asks us again, when the son of man shall come, shall he meet anyone on this mountain shining as light? All the cares of this world, the cares of the pain that they will go through, all that the Antichrist will do to, the, to his people is what we are concerned about. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is he telling me this and telling you this? So that it's labor, it's laboring for me and you, and the blood is shed for me and you. We know what be in vain. So, what do we do? We are to labor in praying, labor in doing the work the Lord has given me and you. Why? So that on that day, we will be accounted worthy to follow him. It's so scary that on that four days, the Lord has revealed rapture to people for, uh, in just one ministry. There are ministries that have tens of thousands of people. They don't, they don't see it. Oh yeah. But on that four days, God revealed rapture. And many of us are not still concerned. We are still careless. We are still living at the same, including me. I ask God, please rescue me from this carelessness. Luke 21, 36. Proverbs 4, 23. Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 35. Luke 21, 36, please. Okay, Luke 21, 36, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Amen. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be Sorry, watch it therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. When you read before, Amen. you see things that is coming to this world, and our eyes are beholding them. 
we have already seen them manif manifesting. Instead of me and you to go into a closet and begin to pray, we are concerned about those things. He said, Watch ye therefore and pray always. Anywhere you go, pray at all times. Why? So that you be accounted worthy to be to escape those things you are afraid of. All these things you are talking about is coming. But for me and you to be able to escape them, we must pray all the time. Pray for the safety of our souls. Are we doing that? Are we not be distracted out of prayer? Are we not be concerned about the things we fear more than even the prayer that we are supposed to pray to escape us from it? And to stand before the Son of Man. I want all to search our prayer life. I want all to search the way we used to pray before and now, and ask yourself, how can I enter heaven this way? How can we make it this way? Are you sure you and I are able to stand before the soul of another day with this our prayerlessness? We are being engulfed by things that the, the devil has set forth to distract us, and that is all we are just concentrating on now. Be on YouTube, checking the next verse they are, they are produced. Our head is now Lord dead with things that are totally out of it. Prayer and the study of the word of God is gradually slipping away from us. And God help me, help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What is the Lord saying? He's saying, my children, please. I love you all so much. I have went all form of destruction. All these things are destruction to the children of God. To the people of the world, it's normal. But to me and you, they are destruction. The people of the world have not to be distracted from. But me and you, we are being distracted from the cross of Christ we are carrying. Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. I read in Jesus' name, Proverbs 4, 25. Amen. Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelid look straight before thee. 26. Ponder the path of thy feet, and, le and let all thy ways be established. 27. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. 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 This is instruction from the wife's father to the children. Let the eyelid look straight before thee. And let not, it say, let the eye look right on. And let the eyelid look straight before thee. Why? So that we will not be distracted. A lot of invasion, a lot of things are being produced just to distract me and you. And we are looking into them. And those things are taking our mind away from prayer, from the work the Lord has given to me and you. Say, ponder the path of thy feet. Check your feet. Am um, I, I not stepped away? Am I still right with God? Was I like this 2018? 2020, we are supposed to have grown. Some of us, we are not stable in one place, but we have gone down, 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 down. And we think the Lord is happy. Is, is it happy? I can body say before that it's not happy with me. And I believe it's not happy with some of us here. We are supposed to grow in grace every day. But distractions is everywhere. You say, turn not to the right hand, but to the left hand. Remove that foot from evil. And the devil wants you and I to be engulfed with evil. It's planting unnecessary seed. Things that does not concern me and you. That is what we are now loaded with in our head. Can you help us? First Corinthians 7, 35. First Corinthians uh, 7, 35. He said, And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you. 
but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That we, you and I, May attend upon the work the Lord has given you and I without distraction. That we may keep praying without distraction as a chorister do his work without distraction. But today we are being distracted. Things that are supposed to make your eye to be stable in him have turned to distraction. To me and to you. So what do we do? It's time for everyone to think of itself and cry out to God. I am not supposed to be so deliver my soul as Emmanuel is crying right now. Brethren, this is the time of utmost sensitivity. We are supposed to be more sensitive as never before. And how can this be? Our hearts must be cleared of all form of unnecessary things, unnecessary load we are carrying. All this, the load of how the Antichrist will come, how the vaccine will come. I'm not saying we should not read about them. How the vaccine will be, how the things of this world, they are unnecessary load for you and I to hear from the Lord and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Our mind must be off these things. You can read about them, but don't load your head with them. Don't let the things that are coming to be your fear. Let you missing heaven, missing rapture be your fear. Isaiah 30, 19 to 21. First Corinthians 10, 13. Hebrews 12, not to forget, I'll stop here. Uh, we'll start from there next time if I'll give an opportunity. Please, let's be fast, part, please. Isaiah. Yes, ma'am. Isaiah 30, verse 1, sir. Verse 4, verse 19 to 21. Okay. Verse 19, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of the cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Verse 20. And, and, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not the teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But the eye shall see the teachers, 21, and the ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Amen. Amen. The same thing is saying now. Children of the Most High, no matter what is happening in the world, he knows it all. Though the world is in hula balloon, the Lord knows it all. Focus your eyes on the teacher. He says, your teacher will always be there for you, but the eyes shall see the teacher. Do you see him? I you not see a problem more than the God that you are serving. When last do you see the Lord teaching you? When last did the Lord speak to you? And your, eye, your ear shall hear from behind. This can only happen when we are not loaded with the things, with the cares of this world. Our hearts must be poured, must be clean for you and I to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking. Everything that has to be the that has to do with the care of this world, everything that has to do with sin, our heart, our life must be part of them for you and I to hear him directing me and you, telling you, don't worry. All these things that are coming. You don't have to worry yourself about them. The reason why we are fidgeting why, is because we don't hear him. Why are we not hearing him? We are already hearing many voices. We are hearing voices of how they will deal with you, how they will inject you in your, your bone, how do, many things will happen to you. By so doing, our head and our mind is loaded 
and the voice of the Holy Spirit we don't hear anymore. Then, Lord is saying, my children, no matter what is happening to you, no matter what I'm saying, you are not the only one. What about if you are carried away with them and other people that were also in the world with you fly away, but because you carry those things in your head, you are not going to fly away. What will you do? You'll be left behind to face the punishment of what you are afraid of. Job said, the things I fear so much have happened to me. Believe this, be the same thing to you. I pray it should be the same thing. Please everybody read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. They had no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. 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 I relate this to what is happening now. There's nothing that's happening that God don't that God does not know. He knows it all. He has embedded in you already the grace for you and I to overcome them. There's no temptation, nothing that will happen in this world that God did not know. Nothing is happening to you that God did not know. If that is sent you to hell, you are on your own. The grace to overcome them can be given. And whatever is happening to you, you'll be surprised times two of it is happening to somebody else. And that person is still bouncing in the Lord. Why you are murmuring, complaining, I say, Father, I cannot anymore. Somebody with that thing is marching on praying every time. But you, you have dropped your prayer life. You, you have dropped whatever God has given to you because of situation. And that same situation has made somebody else to be more closer to God. Ask God, what do you want me to do for you? And the one that God has given to you, you have removed your hand away from it. And you want to enter God's kingdom on that day. When the Son of Man shall come, shall he find you and I faithful with the things we are going through allow him to meet us faithful? What do we do? Hebrews 12, 1 to 4. Hebrews chapter 12, um, 1 to 4, I read. It said, wherefore, sin we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. For Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Amen. 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 Only if an eye are going to now, there's no written here. And the Lord is making an eye to understand in this one. Wherefore, seeing we are all, all of us here, compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. Whatever the drag is from God now is dragging somebody in. And the, that person will bear witness against you that day. The same thing now that is distracting me and you now, this vaccine, this YouTube and all. So many people take their eyes away from it and they are even more praying. What is distracting me is making somebody to fear God more and pray, pray more. And on that day, they say, you come, come. Are you saying it was YouTube? You, where you are left? Where you are, where you are left there and say, I was a lecture. How did you make it? I took my eyes away from it. Did I force you to do it? No, I made up my mind to do so. And I was disciplined enough to make, take my eyes away from it. But you were not disciplined. And today you have been caught in, in the web of Antichrist. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you afraid? Don't be afraid. Say, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, 
who for the joy do you also know that the joy is set before you? Why don't we take our men away from the pain that we are thinking about? Um, because of the joy is set before you and I after this world, after that job. Keep on doing what we ought to do for the safety of our souls. Endure the cross. What is that cross you are carrying? Endure it. Enjoy it. And the grace will enjoy it and begin to you. Despite the shame. And he sat down today. Do you and I also want to sit down with him on that day? We must endure. No matter what we are going through, no matter what we see on Facebook, no matter we see that people are dying, we should only pray, Father, please have mercy. If it is will, let it stop. If it is will, God, we have no power to do anything. But all I'm praying, give me the grace to endure unto the end so that when you shall come, you will meet me uh, faithful. When the Son of Man shall come, shall he meet faith on the earth? That question is scary. If God that know the earth from the beginning could ask such a question, would you fear? Have you ever sat down and pondered about it? This question was not asked by Apostle Paul. So don't ask by, it was asked by God himself. Shall he meet faith on the earth? Will he meet you and I doing what he asked you and I to do? Or our faces have taken us away from it. As I was telling most of my people, we are in a time where when anything is happening to somebody now, the job you are doing for eight hours, we must stop. But that work you are doing for God for 15 minutes, you stop it. You will be able to go to work and work for 15 hours without shaking. But you want for God for 15 minutes, you will not be able to do it. Can you see what the devil is doing? When the Son of Man shall come, shall he meet faith on the earth? You have stopped what you are doing for the Lord. You are still thinking you are faithful. You are not faithful. You are gone. You are gone. Your mind is still stick on that job. You are, you, you are still exactly the time to go to that job. You still go. But God's own. He don't do it anymore. Prayer is no more there. To come and read the Bible now, the mountain is like a heavy load. Some of us, we remember how we used to be fervent in it. We are no more. When the Son of Man shall come, we will meet faith on earth. When God says we will meet faith on earth, he's asking, will I meet you faithful? Will he meet Apostle Emmanuel faithful? It's scary. It's scary. Hmm. Luke 21, verse 34. Look to the matter before. Let me... 31, 34. Please quickly, quickly, man. Look to 31, 34. Yes, man. And take heed to yourself, least any, least at any time your heart be overcharged with, with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unawares. Amen. 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 So what is God saying? Don't let the awaiting day, that day of emergency, meet you unaware. And I so much love this 34, verse 34 of Luke 21. He wrapped everything in it. Let no problem, let no enjoyment, let no what to see make you to miss rapture on that day. Don't let it. And take heed to yourself. List anything at Least at any time your heart be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness, enjoyment, and cares of this world, problems, and so that they come upon you on our way. Don't let sorrows take you away from the work of God, and don't also let enjoyment take you away from it. People will miss rapture because of what they were enjoying. Some people will miss it because of what we are going through. Our God is saying, 
No matter what takes you away from it, you have no excuse. I've told you. Don't let drunkenness, don't let enjoyment. Hey, God has blessed me. I have a, I have an office now. You are not concentrated in the, in the office. You are in the work of God. Oh, God, why? Problem, problem. You're not concentrated on that problem. You need to work of God. In both ways, you have no excuse to give on that day. Many of us now, because when we were in pain, we were so fervent. Now, job have come. Husband have come. House have come. Things have come. I've got to the car. Things we are doing. We have withdrawn our hands from them. Some of us also, before now, when this we are rosy, we are also trying. Now, situation have come. Problem have come. We have also withdrawn. Which side are you? Have you withdrawn from what you are doing because of problem? You have no excuse. Have you also withdrawn because enjoyment has come? You have no excuse. Remember, I said it shall be at the day of Noah. Many were marrying, many were in the office, many were fully formed, many were doing many things, and rapture will come. And because their mind was not in God anymore, they will miss it. I ask myself this question again before I leave now. When the Son of Man shall come, Will he meet me faithful? Will he meet you faithful? Will the things that are happening in this world not take your mind away from him? And I pray, God will help me be faithful. And God will flood me back to prayer. Flood me back to study this world. Flood me back to fasting. Flood me back to evangelism. Flood me back to all those things I used to do. And make it to say, yes, this is my blossom in whom I will please. Is there any one of us now that God can say, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I will please. When I knew her, when I caught her, I knew her then. Now she has grown now. You are not even stable to where he knew you. Not to if you have grown. Evangelizing, well, go, go back. Prayer, no more death. Now if we are able to study two chapters, then I will be happy. Those days we will study seven chapters, we'll be crying. Oh, only seven chapters of the Bible a day. If we, ask, if we study it too now, hey, God, I thank you for today. If we're able to pray maybe for 30, for one hour, one, two hours now, hey, I have done a lot today. But before, if you pray for four hours, we'll be crying, I've not done anything. There's so much I call. Sir, did they meet us? Thank you. This is my cry. I'm crying it out. So go help me. What about you? If this is also your, your, your body, not your cry, I want you to cry to God Almighty. Say, God, what you have said, this is new. I'm not stable in the little I, have been, I was doing. I have not grown. I have gone down, down, down. But if you are happy, I have grown. Say, Father, I thank you for I have grown now big. Thank God for you. Open your mouth and pray to your father. Either he will come and help you to stabilize you, to make you grow, or to thank you. As my daughter, I pure love favor. You have done well. You are you. I love this thing you are now. Open your mouth and cry to God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my God, Baba, Father, Lord, I need your help, oh God, Baba, Father, to run this place to the head. Father, please, oh God, for my help, please, Baba, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please help me, Baba, I need your help, I cannot see by myself, oh God, I need your help, oh God, to run this place, I feel this so many times, I need your help, oh God, that you do not this place I need your help, oh God, that you I need your help, oh God. I am I am Help me, Help me, Help me, 
Lastly, I want you to pray. I say, Father, take my focus away from the things that are happening about Vasna. Oh, let my focus be how to please you. Put my mind on how to please you and not the things going on in this world anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Ah, <laughs> I should be your I should be your I I should be your help. I help. you. I should be your help. I I help. I should be I help. I help. I I I I Amen. Amen. You don't just stop here. When, when, you, when you go back home, you don't create it. Keep calling on God to help you until you see yourself going back to where you were and going, growing now. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Hey, at least at, uh, that's it. That way, stop praying. I'm better. Don't do it. Focus yourself on yourself. And God will help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Are you guys there? You're not born again. Your case is the worst. If those who are born again is like this, the Bible says, hmm, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will you, the ungodly, be? Please give your life to Jesus Christ today. Confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. Let him take preeminence over everything in you. And if you have done that, I thank you for your life. The angels are rejoicing. And I pray on the last day, the, the joy that your soul brought to heaven now will not bring sadness again on the last day in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This, if you have done this, I want to move a step further. Call on any of the men of God for baptism. And God will use them to baptize you, counsel you, pray with you. And if there be any other thing God wanted to teach you, you will humbly do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you. Father, I've come out open to pour out my body. And I believe this body is still the body of my brother or my sister out there. Lord, as you have come to pour it out, oh God, please help us, oh God. Deliver us, oh God, so that on that day, you will meet us faithful in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, from now on, give us the grace we concern about what we are concerned about. Not what the people of the world, what media, social media, all want us to be concerned about in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for this one, your God born again. Grant the journey mercy as I grant us also to the end. Every source on this mountain will not regret ever being born on earth, but we shall all rejoice in your kingdom where we shall ever be with you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Have mercy upon me. There's any error in this, this message? Forgive me and perfect me in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I pray without giving. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know God Almighty has reminded me of something that has come to you, give me a clap of his celebration. Clap my hands. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.